Hello everyone and welcome back to Calmlands. This is the multiplayer co-op with Nordic Farming and we have reached episode number 8. Well, 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 we have another day of uh, a lot of jobs planned on the farm. I'm jumping in the uh, bigger New Holland to start with, if I can get around the pillar. And yep, today we uh, have um, a new expansion planned for the farm we need to buy some more land to try and uh, get some more proceeds for the farm we've got a hundred thousand dollars in the bank but uh, we need money and uh, that's always a uh, consistent need so we can grow but yeah we've got some silage to sell that's at the cow farm we can't give the cows silage directly we figured that out last time but we can uh, give them hay and grass. So yeah, we're going to sell the silage that we have got to make some money. And using that money, I think we're going to buy a new stretch of land, which is then going to be a nice grass area for us to mow, ted, windrow and grab for our cows. So I'm grabbing the trailer, first of all. And Nordic is heading to the shop as uh, he's going to lease a piece of equipment that's going to make our life uh, a little bit easier for uh, loading this trailer with the silage. It is a uh, forage harvester of sorts that can go on the uh, front of a tractor and uh, I'm going to meet him over by the cow farm silo so we can uh, get that loaded and taken to the cell point. So let's go meet him over there. So here we are at the cow farm and uh, I'm actually going to get in position uh, backing it up into the silo so we're then close enough for Nordic to uh, load the trailer with the new uh, forage collector. So while we wait for Nordic to appear, we can take a quick look at the map. Here he is scurrying over towards the cow farm. So yeah, we are going to be purchasing field 47. And uh, yeah, we need to raise uh, enough money to purchase 178,000. And uh, yeah, there's quite a sizable grass area here. We're not really gonna do much with this side on the other side of the road. Well, we might mow that as well, but uh, for the moment that's not too important we're going to focus on this side of the road we'll mow that up ted it windrow it and uh, that can be the source of hay for the cows because the cows are forever hungry um we gave them i think eighty thousand liters yesterday and they've they're down to 64 already so yeah we'd really need to get that up uh high so uh, we don't have to feed them uh, drips and drabs continuously Aha, but here is Nordic with the nicely coloured match uh, forage harvester. Here he goes. He's got it on the back of the tractor. And I think he's just going to see about picking up that uh, little pile there. But there we go. <laughs> it's loading it into the bucket. Oh, good. So there we go. Uh, took a little bit of trial and error, but it is now loading in quite nicely. And uh, yeah, Nordic's got this on the uh, back of the tractor. And uh, we're loading up the silage. And then once we've loaded that up, we'll get it to the uh, usual sell point to sell it. So we're going to see to that first of all. And see you when we're done.
Okay, so Nordic and I have finished loading up the silage from the silo. Now we did have to unfortunately write off some silage as uh, seemed to have uh, glitched a small mound but that small mound was still 13,000 litres of silage so yeah we're gonna have to come up with some way to uh, reset the silo. It looked like some had fallen out the back and glitched so we all just have to uh, see about resetting that silo and uh, yeah, unfortunately we couldn't sell that 13,000 litres but we still got a considerable amount and uh, when we did have a good pile this uh, forage collector was a very good piece of kit so yeah very impressed by it I think once we've uh, got a bit more money for the farm we'll probably buy this and uh, use it as a regular way of loading silage so yeah but let's get it back and return it before we incur any more costs and uh, Nordic is going to sell the last bit of silage. Alright, yeah, made a few bits of profits, but I think we're actually short of uh, how much we need for the field, so we might have to take out a loan. But let's get this lowered and dropped off. And then, there you go, it is the Lizard Forage Pickup, which is pretty good. So let's get that returned. There we go, that is returned, and we can follow Nordic back. We did switch to the Tatra truck because uh, that has a better pulling power for that trailer and uh, yeah, luckily it can hitch it up on the back so for those full loads it didn't struggle up the hill like the uh, bigger New Holland did and yeah whilst I was over this way I remembered we bought that trailer used and we hadn't serviced it up so I got it serviced and the tractor serviced and uh, also refueled as well but let's uh, get back to the cow farm and then we can start to, uh, well we need to take a loan to purchase field 47 and then we can start with the mowing. Right, so we're at the yard, I'm going to grab, oh actually I will make use of having a front attacher this time, I will grab the tedder and the windrow because we're going to need both. So we'll get the tedder on the front and the windrow on the back and Nordic is going to come along and mow to start with we're basically doing the opposite jobs of what we did last time I uh, mowed and forage collected when we did the small grass field, field number one and uh, Nordic did the tedding and windrowing so yeah we like to mix up the jobs right that's both bits so let's get over and we can see about buying field 47 and getting it mowed up okay so we're just going to park the windrow off here and this is our new field area which is pretty good uh, it's a rather large area so uh, I'm just going to get the tether on the back and wait for Nordic to come over with the mower. Alright, oh, we'll get this unfolded. This tractor engine likes to make some gargling noises. But let's take a look at the map. We can see that, uh, yeah, we own field 47 now. And yeah, we took a $70,000 uh, loan, and that's enabled us to. Uh, buy this piece of land and it's also given us a bit of spare cash because we are going to need it to uh, purchase a silo that's going to help us store the hay we need somewhere to store the hay when we've got excess of it okay so Nordic is here we can uh, just line up behind him and he is going to set the outline of the field so I don't need to have the map open which is nice and yeah we can just line up and follow on behind him so let's uh, switch on and lower away and off we go I can never get over the lovely tedding animation that we get in FS22 just looks pretty realistic much better than FS19 it's a nice sight 
Yeah, I'm not sure what kind of yield we're going to get off this grass. Obviously, it's just a uh, natural meadow, not a field that we've ploughed, fertilised and taken care of. So the yields might not be high, but we will see how we get on. Excellent. So my job is to keep up with Nordic and yeah, hopefully we can get this done in no time. Oof. Well, that has been a long job, but we're nearly done. And as you can see ahead of me, Nordic has placed a silo. And it's not just any silo, it's a fermenting silo. And one I've used on Elm Creek, my Elm Creek series. And what that will enable us to do is to uh, place and store hay in there. But uh, when we have excess hay, it will also allow us to uh, ferment the hay into silage. So yeah, that's like a production that runs. Um, so we can really use it to our advantage to, to store hay when uh, we need it for the cows. But when we've got a considerable excess of hay, we can ferment it into silage and then we can sell that. 
as uh, silage sells for pretty good money usually. Right, I'm just coming up to the last little strip I've got to do. Nordic is waiting over there with the forage wagon and I'm going to be hopping on the windrower and uh, Nordic will be following closely behind me to go and take what we uh, forage wagon into that new silo and I think he'll also feed the cows directly as well but this grass field work has uh, definitely taken longer than we anticipated we we're hoping to try and maybe plant some of the uh, fields that we harvested not last session but a session before those need to be replanted for the next season of crop but we haven't quite got round to that yet but we did lime them up uh, with precision farming so they are uh, just needing seeding and fertilizing so we'll have to get round to that when we can but let's uh, drop the uh, tether there and I'm just gonna swing round and grab the windrower and then uh, no rest for the wicked it's straight on to the next job and I think what I'm going to do is I'm not going to cross into the field that's uh, on this right hand side of the road I'm actually going to just stick to the bigger portion of the field first and then do the do the larger oh sorry yeah do the larger field first and then the smaller field second but let's start off there's a bit of grass to start with as uh, we were a bit messy and uh, cut some of the grass on the road yeah here we are wind rowing and again I'm not sure on the yields the swaths don't look too uh, too big but then it's only a smaller windrower and uh, Nordic and I were chatting away whilst uh, doing the mowing and heading and come to the conclusion that when it comes to the next grass field we're really going to have to upgrade the equipment we uh, probably need another set of mowers as I don't think we can get much wider than we've got unless we buy one of those big self-propelled mowers but even then the width is not too big and then yeah we really need a uh, wider tedder you can get wider and uh, the tedder seems to run slower than the mowers so uh, yeah it'd be nice to get something that can keep up with the mowers and tackle a, a wider distance Let's see how Nordic is getting on behind us. Well, yeah, he's not following too badly. I've got to make sure that whilst I'm in the front view, I don't miss too much from the edge. Had my wheel and uh, joystick a while now, but I'm still not used to uh, doing the front camera view. Takes a bit of getting used to definitely a lot easier with uh, mouse and keyboard when you're trying to get the good angles yeah, here we are, let's set up for the bend and as always the lag strikes at the wrong time and completely throws me out but that is the nature of multiplayer gameplay I'm afraid so we're at it again we've had to drop the time right down to uh, real time because there is rain on the forecast and we don't want to be meddling in this field whilst it's raining that just uh, doesn't look very good and uh, yeah, we don't want the, the hay to get wet so just had to drop that down but Nordic and I are going to get this wind road and forage wagoned and into that nice new fermenting silo and also into the cow pen so I'll see you when we're done
double few for that one. That was a very, very long job. Done all the wind rowing and uh, seeing to this field has uh, pretty much taken up the whole uh, session, the whole day for, for Nordic and I. Looks a little bit early, but uh, we've had operating at real time just to avoid the rain that's on the forecast. Nordic has been frantically uh, forage wagoning to uh, get all the hay collected up. I think he's put some in the fermenting silo and some directly into the cows. Yeah, we can see him going through the cow pen now. So, uh, yep. Yeah. Just this last little sliver here. I did a spiral approach for this field, just going around and around until the uh, corners got too tight and we had to start doing some rows. But yeah, that is all of it, Windrowed. And uh, yeah, it's been a huge job. Really has been a heyday. And uh, it's now time to get the equipment back to the yard, washed up, probably needs a service because it's been running all day. We've uh, definitely used over a quarter of fuel in this uh, smaller New Holland. So let's nip it back to the yard and get it taken care of. But here we are, we can drive past our lovely new fermenting silo. We will come inspect at the end and see how much we've got. Back at the yard, let's get in the washing shed and get our equipment all nicely cleaned up. The Samash Windrower, the New Holland 8340, and our Vicon Tedder. Was filthy, now it's clean. Right, so let's give everything a little bit of a service, giving it a wash, so it probably needs a bit of WD-40 and uh, making sure any uh, bits that are bent are back in place and some duct tape. Uh, but the Schluter is in our way, we will have to move that. Oh yeah, we managed to fit all three bits in, so let's get it all repaired. There we go. Considering they've been used for most of the day, the Tedder and the Windrow didn't need too much by way of service. And there we go, that's all parked up. So I'm going to head back over to the cow farm and let's see how much hay we've got in the silo and see how our cows are doing. Right, here we are at the cow farm. Nordic is uh, just backing up out of there. I think he's probably given the cows all they can take. Let's uh, just uh, shut off the tractor and go have a little inspect. Ooh, okay, so the cows have got quite a lot of food. 320,000 litres, and I think that's all going to be hay. Yep, that's all hay, and their productivity is at 100%. They don't need turtle mixed ration to reach 100% because these are meat cows. TMR for 100% is predominantly for uh, milk cows. Um, they've got quite a good amount of water, but we might give them a quick top up while we wait for Nordic to finish. But let's check out our silo and see how much we've got in that. Okay, so we've got 87,254 litres. And I think Nordic's got a little bit of the uh, small uh, field on the other side of the road to do. If we take a look here, we can see... Aha! Uh -huh, so we can do grass silage, so we can put grass in this if we want to. We can also uh, turn our hay into silage, which is very interesting. 
and uh, yeah if we wanted to do that we could just activate it and then uh, it would produce silage which we could then sell or we can just keep it unactivated and use this as a uh, a hay loft and uh, yeah we can also store chaff silage in here as well i'm not quite sure on the uh, maximum capacity but uh, maybe i'll take a quick look at that now yeah i can't seem to see where it tells me how much it stores but looks pretty big so i don't think we're going to max it out in a hurry so let's uh, just hop back in the New Holland and give the cows uh, a little bit of a top up of water. So they are brimmed out on food and water. There we go, that's filled up. And uh, Nordic and I are going to have to see about investing in a uh, water tower to uh, get water for free. As uh, $730 to fill up this tank every time is... Uh, not the most expensive, but uh, yeah, not the most efficient uh, use of our money. But here we go, let's get these guys another 6,000 litres of water. And uh, whilst we're unloading, we can just take a quick look because, yeah, we want to see when they're getting to puberty. And when they get to puberty age, they will then start reproducing. And yeah, we've got 112 Angus cows, so we should get uh, quite a nice amount that reproduce and then when they do we can uh, sell the cows with the highest price at the market and uh, yeah we've basically created more cows through reproduction and then they will grow older reach puberty reproduce and uh, the cycle goes on and we can just regularly sell uh, a large volume of cows to make money there we go, I think that's them filled up, so we can park the water tank away, and I think that's probably it for the day. It's uh, been quite a long job getting our hay situation sorted out, but uh, has definitely been needed to keep our cows happy. Alright, that's the last bits all collected up by Nordic, and we can go see how much we've got in total. There we go, 117,000 litres, and then we had 360 odd, I think it was, for the cows. 320,000 litres. So yeah, we have done uh, a lot of hay today. Um, so I think that uh, marks the end of our day. So just going to go back and get parked up. Right, back at the farmhouse, and what a busy day it has been. We uh, were hoping to try and get onto some planting. We've got our three fields that need uh, the next crop in. But uh, the hay operation and the new grass field really did take over everything. But that's good, because we've got a very large volume of hay created. 320,000 litres that's going to keep our cows fed for many a day and then another 120,000 odd in our silo which yeah if we need to we can process into silage and then sell. I think Nordic's on his way back but next time we have got our three fields that we need to uh, plant in. I think we're going to look to do soybean as soybean with precision farming doesn't need uh, fertilizer so that's going to save us some money and soybean is a pretty worthwhile crop money wise and we also need to turn over area 47 to make that into a field of its own as well and we need a name for that field but we can come up with that uh, at some point here is Nordic so that is the end of today I really hope you have enjoyed watching. A big thank you for your views, likes and subscribes. If you've got any tips, tricks or things you'd like us to do, then feel free to leave us a comment. Please check out Nordic's channel for his perspective of today's session. And until next time, we will catch you later. Cheers all. Bye bye.